Welcome to my galley kitchen that was clearly designed for someone of my height. My name's Connor and uh, I am passionate about cooking wild food in wild places. I'm going to take you through how to use a knife properly. So there's two parts. There's the grip and then there's the actual cutting technique. Let's start with the grip. Most people tend to hold a knife by the handle. They wrap their whole hand around and they're basically holding it like they do a hammer. All wrong. This is a precision instrument and we got to hold it like that. This part right in front of where the handle meets the blade, I'm going to take my index finger and I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to pinch in front of there. I'm going to wrap all my other three fingers behind onto the handle. What this does is it gives me ultimate control over the blade. When you hold it like a hammer, if your hands are greasy, that blade can twist around on you. You can cut yourself. You just might not have straight cuts, but when I choke up, and I pinch that blade, you can feel which way that blade is pointed at all times. Okay, first technique is gonna be the chop. So where I use this most is on large produce like a potato or a carrot or a zucchini, something like that. Something that's big enough that when I cut it, I have to pull my knife all the way off the cutting board and then go back down. So you're gonna pick up that knife with that same pinch grip that we just talked about. I'm gonna cut it in half. So I've got a nice stable platform. Now, how do I hold this thing when I chop it? Well, I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to curl it up into a bit of a claw, and I'm going to tuck that thumb underneath and behind those other fingers. When I hold that potato, all of my fingers are behind my middle finger. And the first knuckle on my middle finger is going to act as a guide. It's going to help control how thick of a cut I want. Um, and I know that as long as I'm rubbing up against that first knuckle, all my other fingers are safe. When I do the chop, I'm going to use approximately a third to maybe half of the knife. I'm gonna start about three quarters of the way up where the blade starts to curve up to the point and I'm gonna take that middle section right there that's nice and flat. And I wanna use that part of the knife because that gives me the absolute best contact when I'm chopping through something. So with my nice stable potato, I'm gonna take that knife, I'm gonna to start towards the tip and I'm gonna go forward and down. When you get a little bit smaller or you get something that's a bit more delicate, then we're gonna start using the slice. This is the technique that I like the most because it gives me the most control over what I'm cutting and it gives me the most precision and I can do the finest work. So I use this on things like ginger, garlic, that I'm gonna slice very fine, or when I'm doing herbs. Anything that's small enough that I don't have to pull my knife all the way off the board and down to cut through, I'm gonna be slicing. You can do this technique with almost any knife, but the knives that make it easiest to do is one that's more of a traditional European style chef knife. So you've got approximately two thirds of the blade that's relatively flat and then at the tip, it tends to curve up. These knives are made for a rocking motion, which is what we're gonna do with the slice. So I'm gonna hold the knife the same way as we talked about before, and I'm gonna use that natural shape of the blade to do a rocking motion. So with the tip on the board, I'm gonna take the handle of that knife and I'm gonna go push all the way through and down slightly. Handle comes up and back, rock down through, up and back, rock down through. So I'm gonna take my basil, I'm gonna line them all up, I'm gonna roll them up, sort of like a cigar. And then using the entire blade and letting the knife do the work, I'm just gonna slice through this basil. Nice rocking motion. There we go. It's a slice right there. Okay, I saved the best for last. We're gonna talk about slicing cooked meat. So I got a black tail steak here that came from an island nearby. Let's slice this bad boy up. So first things first, whenever I go to cut a piece of cooked meat, what I wanna do first is just determine which way the grains are going on that meat, and I wanna make sure that I'm cutting against them. This is just gonna give you the best eating experience possible. So I'm gonna pick up that knife, I'm gonna hold it the same way with the pinch technique. I'm gonna turn that steak so that I'm cutting against the grain, and I'm gonna use a sawing motion. I'm gonna run that blade back and forth across the meat until it goes into the meat, and then I'm gonna apply some pressure. Same thing again start and that knife is sharp enough that it's just going to do the work for me the cut you can give it a small little press down onto the cutting board just to make sure you get a clean cut and just like that beautiful black tail steak up next let's talk about sharpening and caring for your knife uh, a dull knife is kind of useless and a sharp knife can be your best friend. So how do we keep it sharp? Uh, as you use it more and more, you're going to get a small burr that starts to develop on the cutting edge of your blade. And so the easiest way to remove that and just to sharpen in the moment super quickly is to hone your blade on a steel. This is a diamond steel and it comes in a fine and a more coarse texture. These have replaced the traditional metal steels that we used to use in kitchens uh, and they do a much better job. Okay, so with your knife in your dominant hand, pick up the steel in the other and you're going to lay your blade on there, trying to 
approximate the same angle that was on the cutting edge from the factory. In this case, it's 18 degrees. So I'm gonna lay that knife along the steel, starting right at the very back of the blade, and I'm gonna do one smooth stroke all the way along the steel, right to the tip, maintaining that same angle. Do the same on the bottom, all the way through, and repeat that process. Honing your knife, you only need about 12, maybe 16 strokes on that steel, and that should be enough to remove that burr or straighten it. This is a critical piece of equipment in my kitchen, and I use it probably once every couple of days. Okay, next up is sharpening. So if you've been using your knife for a while and it's starting to get dull, and when you hone it on the steel, it no longer brings back that edge, it's time to sharpen your blade properly and put a fresh edge on it. So there's a couple ways to do this. Some are easy, some are more complicated. Okay, first up would be something like this. It's basically a, a sharpening unit all in one. There's many different brands out there. These tend to actually work quite well if, if you've got enough sharpening stones of different grits uh, and they're fine enough. Um, they do a really, really good job and they're super consistent. Second option would be to get yourself a set of stones like these Japanese ones. Uh, ideally, a set should come with three different grits. If you enjoy the process of maintaining your tools and you want to get a bit more in depth and more hands on, you can go with something like these sharpening stones, but just be aware that it might take you some time to perfect that technique. Okay, lastly, how do you care for a knife, whether you're at home in the kitchen or whether you're out in the field on a hunt cooking a base camp? It's super simple. There's two general rules. You want to keep that knife as clean as possible and you want to keep it as dry as possible. To do that, I always pack a clean, dry rag with me whenever I'm cooking in the field and I'll just use that constantly to just wipe down my blade, keep the handle dry, keep the steel clean, and that's it. Super simple. Let's talk about what to look for in a adventure knife. Something that you're going to take with you into elk camp or it might be bouncing around in your boat or in your trailer or something like that. I'm looking for two things. I want a good fit and I want a good finish. Size appropriately. I prefer a full size chef knife that's on the smaller side. This is a eight inch blade on this one and it's got a full size handle. Finish is gonna be critical to preventing any sort of rust or corrosion from accumulating on the blade. Any sort of high carbon steel is out for me right away. It's just too hard to care for when you're out in the field. Some sort of coating on there to minimize rust and corrosion. It's just gonna be that much easier to care for. So I want a full size handle and I wanna make sure that my blade is deep enough that when I'm cutting something on the cutting board, my knuckles are not gonna hit that board. So one feature that I really like about the Anzic is it's got some jimping on the side of the handle. And what that does is it allows you just a little bit more friction, a little bit more grip when your hands are wet or greasy or covered in blood. Lastly, this handle is just slightly textured. Again, we're looking for any little bit of extra grip that we can get in that knife. 